Hey there, bud. Just here to let you know that today we're talking about adult themes in this video. You clicked on the video. You knew this was going to happen. So if you're a minor and I know you crusty motherfuckers watch these videos, I'm not stupid, but just sit this video out. Sit this video out. I'll make y'all another video to watch on your crusty little iPads another time. Don't know when that's gonna happen, but eventually. I've seen people in my comment section and Drumsy's comment section defending me, which I appreciate, but y'all are defending me for the wrong reasons. And let me tell y'all, people are like, does Peach have an OnlyFans? And I see y'all fighting blood, sweat, and tears in these comment section defending me, being like, Peach would never do that. She would never. Well, I'm here to tell you I would do that. Today, we're gonna be talking about OnlyFans and my professional job as a whore. I've been doing this for a few years now. And, and just so y'all know, cause I know everybody asks, yes, my parents do know everything about my job. Um, my dad even helps me with my job. It was really awkward. It wasn't like butterflies and rainbows whenever my parents found out. It took a lot of time. They found out, I would say about two years ago, and it was rough. But that's just what you have to do. That's what comes along with this job. Moxie does know, obviously. I don't know why people ask if Moxie knows. He lives with me. Moxie, come here. <laughs> come sit on my lap. Moxie. Do you know that I have an OnlyFans account? No, this is the first I've heard of this. Well, <laughs> this is awkward. This is awkward, is it? Be real! Yes, obviously, I know that. <laughs> did you know that I had a, well not, I didn't have an OnlyFans account at the time we started dating, but did you know yeah, yes. I was doing this when yes, we started I dating? I knew ahead of time. How does it feel that people jack off to your girlfriend? I don't really think about it very often. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think about it either. <laughs> it never pops into my head on it. I just want to let you guys out there know, if your girlfriend even doesn't have an OnlyFans, there are probably guys still jacking off to her. I'm just letting you know. That's it's definitely true. What else? What's another question that people ask you? They always just ask sex I don't want to- just get out of here. <laughs> and also, let me give you a heads up. If you're watching this video wondering if you yourself should make an OnlyFans, for every success story that you see like mine, there are thousands upon thousands of people who don't have a success story. And that's okay, but that's a part of this industry. And I will be getting into the decisions that I had to make to become an online sex worker. So, we're gonna start off with showing y'all how I even got to this point. And I'm gonna take y'all back to wee lad Peach Jars. Just a wee little girl who was very broke and was an accounting student in college. All I did in college was literally watch anime and work out and showing y'all my Twitter account from 2016. Um, it's just photos of me working out and watching anime. Um, posting more anime stuff, and that's pretty much it. My Twitter account wasn't the best. It wasn't the most thought out, but never in a million years did I ever think this was going to become my job. I was just living off of like $300 a month that included like all of my groceries, utilities. I, I was struggling to say the least. And I had a group of friends in college who said, you know, Peach, you should get half naked in anime girl costumes and go to conventions with your ass out. And for some reason, I was like, wow, that's a great idea. I've never heard of anything better than this. So I started going to conventions with my ass half out. I was too broke to afford good cosplay. So here I am in a Goodwill cosplay. It cost me 20 bucks. A uh, spirit Halloween wig. I thought I looked fucking fire, bro. I don't know how that happened. And literally the first ever convention I went to started the groundwork of how I got here. I posted a photo of this cosplay to Reddit. It looks like absolute dog shit. I took a nap, woke up, and I somehow was on the front page of Reddit. I don't know how or why. I think being a woman has something to do with it, but I'm not sure. I was still in my sophomore year of college whenever I did start getting a little bit of traction on Twitter from this. It was never enough to start selling anything, start making money. Um, in my junior year of college, I did end up getting an accounting internship that paid really, really well. And I was able to leave my hostess job at the time that was paying me minimum wage for, you know, a little bit better paying job. And I actually ended up getting fired from that job because they found my Twitter account. And Texas is an at-will employment state, so they didn't have to have a reason to fire me. 
it was just really embarrassing because I'm from a small town. So legitimately everybody in my small town knew who I was and what I was doing. And it got so big to the point where, you know, the boomers at my job were looking at that. And I was so embarrassed that I lost this job because of, uh, you know, my Twitter content. I lied to all of my friends and I told them that I, lo I, qu I quit. I quit, which was stupid. I didn't fucking quit. So whenever I got fired from my job, I was like, oh shit, I can't afford anything now. So I started up a Patreon in May of 2019 and I was around, I would say 45 to 55,000 Twitter followers at that point. And I was shocked to say the least that people were actually interested in what I was doing. Patreon as a platform wasn't good as connecting with people in my community. I just couldn't talk to people one-on-one, -on -one. couldn't figure out who the fuck was even buying my content because it was so hard to even carry on conversations. Also too, I couldn't just post up a photo. You can't just go like Twitter and just go and post a photo. No, that's impossible on Patreon. So me and my homies hate Patreon, fuck that shit. But I also just wasn't doing a good method. I saw all the other big cosplay girls just post one huge cosplay set a month and I thought, that would be good, you know, only working that once a month, but it was much harder than I was expecting. So I started Patreon in May, 2019, got to December, 2019 and I graduated and I was making enough to support myself at that time on Patreon, which is shocking. I don't know how that happened. I legitimately do not know how that happened. So I decided to full send it. In December, I decided, yeah, I'm gonna do this full time. And I started looking at places to move to. And it just so happened in December of 2019, my dear friend OMG Cosplay said, hey, there's an up and coming website. You should make an OnlyFans account. And I was like, I, I told her, I was like, bitch, you dumb. I'm not doing that shit. Patreon is already so much work. I'm not doing that. And thank God she begged me to do it. She begged me to do it. And I'm not kidding. I can tell you the first day I made my OnlyFans account because it changed the way I did everything in that one day alone. I realized that I could make content the way that I actually wanted to connect with people who were buying my content and like genuinely enjoy myself. It was, it was crazy. And I thank Maggie daily <laughs> for pushing me to like adventure into that. I think there are two major reasons for my success on OnlyFans. One, I made it in December of 2019. This was a few weeks after free accounts were released. So I decided to make my account free. It was so new that my account got disabled because the support got confused why my account was free. So me and Maggie were some of the first people that you could follow with free accounts. And a second is that I already had a platform that I had grown without advertisement. Before I even made a Patreon, I was not making advertisements to anything. And I think that's how my following grew so fast. And I know this is not ideal for a lot of people making these accounts because usually if you're making an OnlyFans, you you need money. Not a lot of people just wake up in their morning and they're like, I wanna change my entire social life, drop my degree in my career, and you know, post pictures of my ass on the internet. Not a lot of people are doing that. And I'm not saying that you can't do that, but it's not a good idea to just drop everything and start doing sex work. I'm very grateful for the place that I've gotten so far, but let me tell y'all, 50% of it is luck. It's luck. And it's hard to say that because I don't want it to be luck, but it kind of is, it kind of is. And I also understand that I am a skinny, cis, white female on the internet who watches anime and streams on Twitch. I recognize my privilege on that one. So I asked people on Twitter for questions that they had about this. Um, if you have any questions yourself after this video, drop it down in the comment section. I check, I literally, I'm not kidding. I still have my notifications on for comments. They go straight to my phone and I read them all the time. And if I can answer your question, I will. No biggie. How are you doing as a content creator and an OnlyFans creator? Like which makes more money? Are you happy doing both or just one? I would say I have a passion for doing both. Obviously I like the one that makes me money, which is OnlyFans. I don't really make a lot of money from content creation. Twitch, I don't even accept donations on. So it's just kind of for fun. 
Content creation is literally just for funsies right now. Um, whenever I do make content, it's kind of like advertising my OnlyFans. So if you do want to be an OnlyFans creator, I definitely suggest being a content creator. Like, you will have the time to do it. Might as well do it and advertise your content. Depending on which one that you take more seriously, uh, anything could make more money. I just took sex work more seriously from the start and everything that came afterwards was just for fun. Did OnlyFans bring out other sides of you? Um, yes and no. I think OnlyFans brought out sides of me that were there. I just didn't know how to feel about it or like feel comfortable. Um, I've definitely become a lot more comfortable with myself since I've started an OnlyFans. Um, I've also seen a bigger improvement in my mental health. I think OnlyFans as a site in general, it runs, it doesn't run well, but it's set up and the platform is really, really well made. So it just brought out the sides of me that I knew were there. I just couldn't achieve yet. Why did I, you make it free? So I wanted everyone to be able to enjoy my content. I didn't want to hide everything behind a paywall. Sometimes I just take some banger ass photos, bro. And I'm like, the world deserves to see this. I also wanted to treat it as a social media because uh, the bad thing about getting into online sex work right now is not a lot of websites want you doing online sex work there. So Reddit and OnlyFans are probably like my two safe places for sex work. So making it free, it's another form of social media. And you can also do pay to, unlo pay to unlock posts. So it's like a uh, pay-per-view, pay-per-view posts. And that's what I do and that's how I make money on it. What has been the most challenging part of being an OnlyFans content creator? Um, actually, I think it's dealing with my own emotions. Since I'm in charge of everything that I do, if I have a bad month or something isn't well received, I take it really, really hard. Um, some months I just don't feel sexy. I don't feel good enough for what I have. So I just really get in my own head and I'm literally just holding myself back. I recognize that. That's my own problem. But my friend Maggie said that if you are very easily discouraged, this is not the job for you. And I can't say that enough. Okay, quite a few people have asked for three do's and don'ts, so you've been a bitch's arm. I will say three do's or don'ts. Do not spam advertisements. Believe it or not, people don't want to see ads. It's hard to remember that whenever you post your content out there that you are an ad. People don't like to see that shit all the time. I know it may be rough, but it will pay off if you schedule and pace out your advertisement. Another thing that I hate to see is self-advertising. You think that wouldn't be a real thing, but yes, bitches will undermine other girls and advertise their content under theirs. Don't do that. Don't do that. You look like a snake asshole. Don't stop. Why is this even a problem? It drives me insane. Another thing, third, not including your personality into your platform. A lot of people think that because you're posting your body online, that's it, bro. Hand, hand me my money. I posted the photo. Where's my money? Like, bro, like I said, people wanted to see me half naked because they've grown to get to know me on Twitter. They've grown to get to know me on Twitch. So what makes them want to see you naked, bro. Post dog pictures. Post what you're doing. Put yourself out there. Add some personality to your post and I promise it will pay off tenfold. I guess those are do's and don'ts. I combined them for efficiency. I also, a few months ago, I made a starting out guide going over in depth how I made it to this point and some keys to my success and do's and don'ts of OnlyFans. I will include that down in the bio. It is completely free. I just wrote it up on Google Documents. I wrote as much as I could and I will be updating it with more FAQ questions. If you want more advice and guidance, go check that out. Please go check that out. Now that I've talked about how I made it to this point, a lot of people want to talk about what I'm going to do in my life. And that's a good question. A lot of people like to tell me that looks fade, this isn't going to be forever. But as I'm aging, believe it or not, my fans are aging too. I really, really enjoy my job. And I think the only point that I'd leave it at is that I feel like I've done enough. I feel like I've done every ass pose that I could possibly do. It's time to hang it up. Like, I'm done, bitch. But I, I do plan to do this well into my 30s. Surprise, surprise. Unless I feel like I can no longer do it. 
And even then, I think I'm going to continue sex work for the rest of my life. I know a lot of older ladies in their 50s to 70s on OnlyFans and they're killing it. I want to be that one day and that's okay. Will I eventually get another job? Yes. I'm actually planning to go back to school to get my marketing degree. And I've just come to accept the fact that if a company won't hire me because I have an OnlyFans account, then that probably isn't a company that I wanted to work for in the first place. Is it that easy? No, I've... It's still really unsure. It's scary. I could wake up any day and this could no longer be my job and that makes me want to shit my pants. There's a lot of laws being passed every day against porn and it's sad to see our world going backwards about sexuality and how people express themselves. I didn't think I would fall in love with this job as much as I have. It took a lot of rough decisions to get to this point and if you're deciding to make an account and get into this yourself, you really need to sit down to yourself and make a make a five-year plan, make a 10-year plan, make a 20-year plan. Like I said, this is gonna follow you for the rest of your life. I will forever be peach jars. And I'm excited for that though, but it's scary. That's so scary, but that's my life now. And I'm, ex I'm excited to see where it takes me. If you have any more questions, drop them down below. I'll try to say as much as I can. Um, thank you for being so supportive. Being a sex worker and a content creator, it feels really weird making a spot for myself on the internet, but I'm glad that I'm persevering and I'm still doing it. I'm not scared off yet. I also don't know if I said it in the last video, um, but thank you for 100K on YouTube. I I got really emotional whenever it happened. I didn't think I'd ever be known for something more than just my body. And the fact that y'all are all enjoying my videos here means the world to me. Any support of any kind means the world. So thank you. Leave? I don't know, I guess I'll leave. Hey. Hi. Bye.